22 short films about Springfield. Well, when you have a show with so many unique and memorable characters, sometimes you just want to see as many as possible work their magic for just one episode. And that's what we get here. As the title suggests, there's no straightforward story. There's 22 short stories all following various characters. Now, an average Simpsons episode is about 22 minutes, which means each story is only allowed roughly one minute of screen time which means the odds of getting at least one story that isn't all that great are very high. Yet, every single story they go over, I enjoy. They're all made in the same unique and surreal style that fits each individual character, and each one, despite being vastly different from the one before, connects smoothly thanks to some clever transitions. And this episode also has some of the series' best parodies including a phenomenal parody of the Butch and Marcellus scenes from my all-time favorite movie, Pulp Fiction. As soon as Zed gets here, the party will begin. I got donuts. I got... Hey, I know you! And just like Deep Space Homer, this episode also found its way into meme culture, thanks to a humorous and entertaining scene involving Principal Skinner and Superintendent Chalmers. I thought we were having steamed clams. No, no, I said steamed hams. You call hamburgers steamed hams? Yes. Yeah, that's the thing about The Simpsons humor. It's so surreal that there's so many jokes that will just stick with you. And there's a lot of material in the best of their episodes that are just perfect for meme culture due to them being so unique and surreal that they're either the best way to mock someone or to be sarcastic or just a hell of a lot of fun to reference. Hell, even Strider and Enter eventually joined the Steam Tam meme. I thought we were having steamed clams. Oh, no, no. I said steamed hams. Personally, I feel each of these stories adds a little more depth to these characters, be it a main character or a side character. And I think that's because the stories are tailor-made to fit each character's personality, meaning each time it transitions, Every new story gives the humor a clean slate to start out with, that it doesn't need to tie in with what was shown before it. Overall, this episode is 22 short films of full-on Simpsons magic. Let's laugh at him! <laughs> Wave to the people! The Bard of Darkness now, I praise the Strangers on a Train parody, Dial M for Murder, from Treehouse of Horror 20 because I'm a big fan of Hitchcock. So naturally, the Rear Window parody, Bard of Darkness, would find its way onto this list. It's about the Simpsons getting a pool and Bart breaking his leg trying to jump in, resulting in him becoming ostracized for the summer and slowly going crazy. So Lisa gives him her old telescope and, while spying on the neighborhood, Bart thinks Flanders killed his wife. For me, this is one of those episodes that has so much going on that it's impressive it still managed to only be 22 minutes. It's very well paced and everything blends together so nicely that it not only stands out as a movie parody, but as an all-around great Simpsons episode. Bart's slip into madness doesn't feel forced to fit into the episode because the episode presents his situation much more visually than vocally. You actually see how boring Bart's situation is, and how he's incapable of doing the things that make him happy. Which adds a lot of weight to what he's seeing happen, as Bart himself questions if what he's seeing is real, or if it's just his mind messing with him. Something that's subtly foreshadowed earlier in the episode. Well, looks like it's just you and me, Barty boy. Oh, great. I get to spend the summer with my brain. And the reveal as to what Bart was actually seeing going on is a really smart payoff. So yeah, to sum it up, Bart of Darkness is an impressive episode that I myself wouldn't mind watching if I was in Bart's situation. Everybody in the pool! It is a fine barn, but sure tis no pool, English. Do it! The Springfield Files. I think one of those crossover ideas you'd never expect to work is The X-Files and The Simpsons, but believe it or not, this is a pretty damn amazing episode. 
This episode is about Homer coming across an alien after a night of drinking, and setting out to find it again, with a little help from Mulder and Scully from the X-Files. Everything about this episode captures the atmospheres of the show perfectly, because, well, it has its fun with the logic of the X-Files. Drugs and illegal weapons coming into New Jersey tonight. I hardly think the FBI is concerned with matters like that. It still manages to have its chilling moments, like when the alien first emerges. And his movements and voice are also pretty unique considering how commonplace aliens have become. Don't be afraid. Yeah! And the reveal of who the alien is, is also much more clever than it needs to be, because it not only makes a lot of sense while not going too overboard for the show's own good, but it's just a very hilarious reveal. It's honestly one of my favorite moments from the show. Overall, this episode is fun, chilling, and very rewatchable. What else can I say? It's out of this world. Look at this lineup and tell us if any of these are the aliens you saw. Yo! Homer at the Bat. I know I talked about football during Toon Sports Week, but that was only because Shadow had already picked baseball by the time I joined in. Otherwise, I would have picked that sport solely to talk about how great this episode is. It's about Homer becoming the star player for the Power Plant softball team and leading them to the finals. But Mr. Burns makes a huge bet with the team opposing them, and in order to win his bet, he hires nine major league stars to play for the team, replacing everyone. Yeah, I think most would agree what makes this episode so great are the cameo appearances. Every baseball star featured in this episode is voiced by their real-life counterparts, and each one stands out in their own way because they're written to be as different as possible. Wow, it's like there's a party in my mouth and everyone's invited. But sometimes I wish I had something a little more blue-collar. You know, with big machines and cool dials and stuff. I also really enjoy what it does with Homer, since usually Homer is never initially good at anything, let alone the best amongst his peers. So you really sympathize with Homer when he gets replaced, because you understand how happy he was to finally have something he was good at and got admiration for. Also, a big reason Homer is as good as he is he credits to his magic bat, which I think has a really fun backstory. And what I think I find the most clever is the way they work in the climax of this episode, which involves most of the superstars coming across misfortunes that keep them from playing, all of which connect to a moment involving them earlier in the episode. And it's impressive to do something like that for nine separate cameos. That damn hypnotist! You! Look what you've done! My starting pitcher thinks he's a chicken! This episode is just overflowing with effort, and you can tell the writers had a lot of fun with it, which just makes for a classic episode that any baseball or non-baseball fan can enjoy. Plain and simple, Homer at the Bats is a Grand Slam. A uh, wrong Grand Slam. For the last time, get rid of those sideburns! Look, Mr. Burns, I don't know what you think sideburns are, but... Don't argue with me! Just get rid of them! Marge versus the Monorail. Just like you only move twice, Marge versus the Monorail is one of those episodes that is heavily considered the best episode The Simpsons ever made. It's about Mr. Burns getting fined $3 million and the town trying to figure out how to spend it. And a showman named Lyle Laneley convinces them to spend it on a monorail, with Homer becoming the monorail conductor. The Marge figures out that Laneley is nothing but a silver-tongued con man and sets out to stop the monorail. Man, I'm already saying monorail way too much. Now, a big reason this episode is considered by many to be the best Simpsons episode is for basically the same reason Scott Tennerman Must Die is considered the best South Park episode. Because it was the episode that shaped the show's humor into the surreal awesomeness it excelled at. The type of surreal humor that arguably has kept The Simpsons around as long as they have been. So yeah, any episode you like for its surreal nature, you can totally thank this episode for that. As well as its writer, Conan O'Brien. Yes, that Conan O'Brien. Throw up your hands and raise your voice! Monterey!
This episode is littered with abstract humor and made up mostly of throwaway gags, all of which focus on pushing the show's cartoon logic to the max, be it with the creative climax involving Homer trying to stop the monorail, or with one of the catchiest songs from the series. I swear it's Springfield's only choice. Throw up your hands and raise your voice. Monorail. What's it called? Monorail. Once again. Also, the repercussions the con artist suffers are really funny. It's quick, but it still leaves you satisfied to see. In fact, this episode always makes me feel like I just went on a crazy adventure. It always gets my adrenaline pumping. Honestly, this is one of those episodes that has received every bit of praise possible already, so... I'll just sum it up here by saying Marge vs. the Monorail is an action-packed masterpiece that we can all probably thank for The Simpsons, Never fucking ending. But Main Street's still all cracked and broken. Sorry, Mom, the mob is spoken. And Maggie makes three. Another great flashback episode from The Simpsons, as this episode goes over the story of Maggie's birth and how Homer handled it. It takes place two years in the past and involves Homer finally being financially able to quit his job at the power plant and take up his dream job at the bowling alley. However, after celebrating, Homer gets Marge knocked up again and has to figure out how he can afford to feed another mouth. It's just that I haven't told Homer yet, and with his new job, I don't know how we're going to be able to afford this. I think what I find the most impressive about this episode is how well it mixes comedy and serious moments, kind of like how The Way We Was did. However, I think this episode blends these two together much more effectively, and does a great job making you feel what Homer is feeling. It'd be very easy to just make him typical Homer about finding out Marge is pregnant, but... They do such a good job showing what this job means to him that you really sympathize with and relate to him, especially after seeing the grandiose way Homer quits his job. Yeah, yeah, where to play the boss's head like a bongo, Homer. He's getting a pretty good sound out of that guy. But when Homer meets Maggie for the first time, it's honestly a really beautiful and touching moment, and it's capped off well by what is probably the most beautiful image from the series. I won't reveal what it is, because it's one of those scenes that I highly recommend people experience for themselves. But let's just say it shows how much Maggie ended up driving Homer, and really brought out a much more mature and touching side to him. It's honestly one of those few moments where I actually went, "Ah!" But it's not all sickly sweet. The humor in this episode is still at the top of its game, especially Homer's ignorance to people congratulating him for the new arrival, but he constantly thinks they're talking about his job. I've just heard about the little bundle of joy. Congratulations, sir. It's true. The bundle is little, but I'm not in it for the money. And, of course, this line here after Maggie is born. It's a boy. And what a boy! Uh, that's the umbilical cord. It's a girl. Overall, this episode is a touching, hilarious, and relatable piece of work that will make anyone who watches it feel the struggles and joys of a new arrival. Actually, I quit and I came to get my job back. Through there. <laughs> so, come crawling back, eh? Last Exit to Springfield. This is yet another episode that is heavily debated as not just one of the best Simpsons episodes, but THE best Simpsons episode. It's about Homer becoming the new union leader so he can avoid losing his dental plan and not have to pay for braces that Lisa has to get. But Burns mistakenly believes Homer is an honest and brilliant union leader, and a whole bunch of clever misunderstandings happen between the two of them. Mmm, he's a worthy foe. Look at him, Smithers. Exercising away! This episode is filled with flawless jokes, as a whole lot of them are used heavily to move the plot, while still being very funny. A good example is this scene here, where Mr. Burns tries to see if Homer's corrupt and can be bought off, but Homer is too stupid to tell that's what it is, 
and instead mistakes it as Mr. Burns hitting on him. After all, negotiations make strange bedfellows. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Burns, but I don't go in for these backdoor shenanigans. Sure, I'm flattered, maybe even a little curious, but the answer is no. Yeah, that's some of the best written double entendre I've seen in an episode. It's not only really funny, but it actually has an effect on the plot, as it fully convinces Mr. Burns that Homer can't be bought off. And this episode is littered with jokes like that of all styles. Whether it be satire of old people, one trick is to tell them stories that don't go anywhere. Or just straight up clever references like the disappearance of union leader Jimmy Hoffa and the infinite monkey theorem. It was the blurst of times, you stupid monkey! <laughs> For me, this episode has the overall smartest humor. And it's without a doubt the funniest episode this show has ever shot out. So that alone should speak volumes about how much I enjoyed the remaining three on this list. But... If you're looking for the absolute best humor this show can do, then Last Exit to Springfield is without a doubt the episode you're looking for. On one condition, you must resign as head of the union. Homer's Enemy. Well, like I said, I was only disqualifying Treehouse of Horror episodes. I never said I'd disqualify episodes I've done solo reviews on. And if you saw the video I did on Homer's Enemy, it really shouldn't surprise you that it'd be on this list, or that I'd rank it this high. Since it has its own video, I won't go over this episode too much, but I will sum up why it's this high. It's, in my opinion, a perfect example of how you do dark humor, in a way that'll appeal to the majority of people, as well as how you send a message. It's not messing with anyone's established character, and it's not making any of these characters seem worse than they actually are, just to make the plot work. For me, this was one of the first episodes I had ever seen to make all these generally despised elements work in a much broader way. And the fact that this episode did get a lot of hate at first, but is now considered one of the best episodes this show's ever made, is more proof of how fantastic it is. Anyway, that's all I wanted to add, so let's move on. If you lived in any other country in the world, you'd have starved to death long ago. He's got you there, Dad. Who shot Mr. Burns? Yeah, with the exception of a few lists, I usually try to avoid episodes that come in parts, since that tends to give it an unfair advantage over regular episodes. But I'm starting to think that it'll be best to just pick my favorite two or more part episode from each series to put on a list, since there is still a lot that needs to go into them to make them stand out. And I think most would agree when it comes to two part episodes from The Simpsons, there wasn't exactly much competition against who shot Mr. Burns. This episode is about Springfield Elementary School striking oil, only for Mr. Burns to steal it and put it towards a plan to block out the sun from Springfield in order to ensure everyone there has to pay him for lights, heat, and energy. You know, basic survival necessities. Which, as you can imagine, results in the citizens of Springfield becoming very upset and holding a town meeting to discuss how they're going to deal with him. But after the town meeting, Mr. Burns is shot, and everyone in town is considered a suspect. For those who don't know, this episode is largely based off the Dallas episodes A House Divided and Who Done It, which involved the show's main antagonist, J.R. Ewing, getting shot by an unknown assailant. In fact, those episodes were so big, they started a phenomenon called Who Shot J.R., so it only makes sense that eventually The Simpsons would tackle something so big. And what's great about this episode is that... It really is, initially, a tough to figure out who done it. The first episode gives every single character a great reason to want to off Burns, that it literally could have been anyone. Burns cost me my groundskeeping job at the school. I lost my bar. I lost his bar. Burns, your scurvy schemes will earn ye a one-way passage to the boneyard. But not only that, it builds up the suspense at almost every turn, and has many well-hidden clues to tell you who it was. But these clues are just that, well-hidden. Like, an example of one is the way Mr. Burns collapses. Would 
dignify that with response. <clears throat> yeah, that's revealed to be a pretty big clue at the end. And when you rewatch it, knowing who did it, it's still impressive how well they worked them in. The second episode begins the elimination process and gives everyone some pretty hilarious alibis that clear them from the investigation. Blast! I took mother's makeup kit by mistake. Oh, uh, excuse me, ma'am. <gasps> Superintendent Chalmers. Oh my god. So Superintendent Chalmers can vouch for your whereabouts? Oh yes. But anything else he tells you is a filthy lie. But even as the evidence starts mounting up to who shot him, it still remains a pretty broad mystery until the culprit is revealed. And the reveal of who actually shot Mr. Burns is so clever because it's not only a very unexpected reveal, it still fits the logic of the universe without anything being tampered with to make it work, and you really don't feel cheated by it in the slightest. It's honestly the best animated whodunit episode I've ever seen, and it's the episode I would pick that highlights the true story-driven skills of The Simpsons writing staff. So yeah, to sum it up, this episode is a masterful piece of writing of both mystery and comedic elements that the more you watch, the less of a mystery it is as to why so many people love it. Well, I couldn't possibly solve this mystery. Can you? Yeah, I'll give it a shot. I mean, you know, it's my job, right? Well, like I said in part one of this video, with over 600 episodes, there's bound to be one that'll stand out more to you than it will to others. And I would say for me, that episode is Lisa Substitute, my all-time favorite episode. It's about Lisa's class getting a substitute named Mr. Bergstrom that Lisa connects with, due to him being the only real positive male influence on her. And throughout the episode, you see the impact he's leaving on her, and you see how he slowly starts to inspire her. Now I guess you can make a slim argument that Lisa falling for a teacher is... creepy, but... Seeing as Lisa's a little girl, and seeing as he doesn't act like he's got the hots for her in return, it's honestly portrayed pretty innocently. It's just one of those immature people who instead of building themselves oh, up have neat. to- neat! Can I have it? Yes, but I didn't do it. Are you sure you didn't do it? It's good. No, but I'm starting to wish I had. Though... So, I guess people will still feel uncomfortable since it's Dustin Hoffman who voices Mr. Bergstrom. And he's had his own share of controversy in recent memory. But honestly, that doesn't take away from the fact that Mr. Bergstrom is a very well-written one-time character. He definitely rivals Hank Scorpio as my favorite one-time character just because he has a very uplifting charm to him. And I really like the references they make to some of Dustin Hoffman's movies. Mrs. Krabappel, you're trying to seduce me. <laughs> well? There's also a nice little side plot with Bart running against Martin for class president. And it's exactly what you would expect it to be. A nice little commentary on politics in school and how it's all a popularity contest. But here, there is a nice little twist in the end that offers further commentary on why Bart's antics have negative repercussions on him. But all this alone isn't enough for me to consider it my favorite. No. If I'm being honest, the reason I consider it my favorite episode is because it contains the scene from The Simpsons that inspired me the most. It's a scene where Mr. Bergstrom leaves for another job and gives Lisa a note telling her it has all the answers she'll ever need. It'll be okay. Just read the note. Now that is how you say everything you need to with the fewest of words. But what's even better is that Mr. Bergstrom's teachings don't stop with Lisa. In fact, the episode reveals that Lisa was never the one who needed his teachings. It was Homer who needed them, because after Mr. Bergstrom leaves, Homer is forced to realize how absent he's been from Lisa's life, and how he needs to improve himself for his family. And this ends up having a continuous effect as Homer ends up not only cheering Lisa up, but Bart as well, who's depressed after the results of his story arc. In the end, not only are you taught that you're the one who holds all the answers for yourself, but you're taught that there's always room for improvement. There's always a way for you to be a better person. There's always someone out there who can help you with that. And even the ones who seem hopeless or perfect can always become better. That's a lesson that's so well executed that... 
I can't help but consider this the only episode of the show that I can always fully connect with. And the episode I can always come back to when I myself need a little reminder of who I am. You're the best teacher I'll ever have. Oh, that's not true. Other teachers will come along. Oh, please! No, I can't lie to you. I am the best. And that'll be it for my top 20 best Simpsons episodes list. And uh, hopefully it was worth the wait. Honestly, there's some shows out there that are hard to make lists on. Shows like South Park and Rick and Morty, for example, come to mind as shows that have multiple episodes that can be considered the best. And The Simpsons, I do honestly think is up there. And I don't care if that's because it's as funny as those shows or because of how long it's been on. Bottom line, this show is one of those shows that has changed the world. It's a show that always finds a way to stay relevant and has built one of the strongest fan bases of any show. And I'm honestly glad about that because that is a hard accomplishment for any show to achieve. And it's something that deserves to be admired. And I'm so happy to have finally given it a little more praise. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for joining me for 2018. And I'll see you in 2019 with a continuation of my Spongebob seasonal review.